Saturday has turned into a filming day, and I'll be honest, I'm completely here for it. So I'm Chad Brooks, I'm a pastor in North Louisiana, and I like to make videos about uh, the Bible, encouraging the devotional life, and then just the everyday normal side of ministry. And today's video is all about the ESV Panorama New Testament. And for the longest time, I was so scared to write in this Bible because Crossways loves to come out with a great edition and to put it out for a year or so and then to quit making it. And I'm not that big of a fan of the ESV, but I love the way the types of Bibles that Crossways make. It really just matches up with how I use physical Bibles. And I saw this coming out you know, ages ago, and I wanted it because I take notes in my Bible, I write in my Bible, Nobody who follows this channel or follows me on Instagram is surprised about that. But I had some problems with it, and I shot this video a couple of weeks ago, and I, I'm preaching a sermon series on James right now, and I, I decided to, to mark up the entire book of James because, as you see, this Bible has a lot of space to write in. Uh, and so I put my overhead rig up, I filmed it, but you know, just my, and I, I talked about it a lot, it ended up being way too long of a video, but it also, like I just did not have a good angle. It looks funny, I don't like it. Uh, so what we're about to go through is a time lapse. I condensed about an hour and a half of note taking into two and a half minutes. And I'm gonna show that time lapse while I talk about the problem that I ultimately had with this Bible. Now, I loved it, it was great. I'm gonna share the things that I liked about it, uh, but this is just kind of some of the thoughts that I had because as I was writing, I kept finding myself you know, talking to the camera about some of the problems that I had. And the main problems that I had with this Bible is there was just a lack of margin space to it. You know, um, for the way that I write up, I'm used to um, uh, the ESV Cambridge wide margin. Some people call it the Eagle, but I buy it in the hardback, so it's not really the Eagle. Maybe we can call it like the Turkey Vulture or something like that, because it's pretty solid. Um, but for me, really what it was is the margins weren't big enough. So for the way that I write, the margins weren't big enough. It's also a double column layout, which I don't care about. Some people uh, go through like frustrations with double column. I don't care, but the two columns, like, they were spaced together so tight that it was really difficult for me to do some of the stuff that I do. Uh, there was also no um, uh, cross references at all in this. And so, and that you probably have seen in the time lapse, I haven't come already, there's a point in time where I go get my cambered wide margin out because I want to look at cross references. I'm going to be honest. That may be like the 10th time in my life that I've actually needed to use cross-references and haven't found them. I'm pretty good at re remembering those on my own, but there was just one space like, hey, let me see what this is. Like, wow, I need a cross-reference. So I went and got uh, my normal Bible out and got that on there. Uh, also for me, you know, the print spacing is a little tough. I'm 41, I'm getting old. I've got, I've got reading glasses that I use now. Wow, that made my camera so much clearer, but uh, I didn't have these. I almost went to the dollar store while using this to buy reading glasses because the print space is just a little too small for me. And so I was first scared that I would never, uh, I was scared to use this Bible because I was terrified that I would not be able to find another one because I would like it so much, which is a party trick that Crossways loves to do because sometimes I'll find Bibles I like a lot. Uh, and I, I use the ESV only for the editions. I really am not that big of a fan of the translation. Uh, but I was scared that I, I was scared to use this Bible for so long that uh, because I would I would like it so much and I wouldn't be able to find another one. 
don't have that fear anymore. So that was my, my kind of problems with it. Now this is what's good with this Bible because there is a lot good with this Bible. Number one, the paper is fantastic. Like if you're crazy about paper, it's great. As I look through this, you know, there is absolutely no highlighter ghosting. Um, I can see a little bit of ink ghosting from the way that I uh, write. And I can't remember if I was using either a Pilot G2 or I think that's what I was using that day. Uh, so it kind of shows through a little bit, but not so much that it's going to be a problem. So the paper is fantastic. You know, um, I like the aesthetic. I'm a fan of hardback Bibles. This having like the cloth binding piece right here and A, it being hardback. Like this, this Bible just looks beautiful. I like it a lot. It reminds me, I'm looking back behind me and I, I can't find it. Like it looks, it looks like how um, if you write a paper, like a, do, like a, like a doctoral um, dissertation or a master's thesis and the library makes you pay for a hard copy, um, it looks like what those library copies are. Um, and so that's, that's really cool. So I love the aesthetic of it. And I also like the fact that smaller books in the Bible, like the book of James and other things that they fit onto one page. So like the book of James is completely in one page spread. Most of the letters of Paul are on one page spread. It's so like Galatians and Ephesians, one page spread, but there's even less space to write on there. So like I know for me that this Bible is just not going to be as big of a deal as I thought it might be. So my final thoughts on this Bible. Um, I'll use it again. Like, I'll definitely use this Bible again, uh, but I won't be fearful of it. I think that a lot of the desire that this was cool is for those books where you have one page spread, but that's actually not that odd. I have other books. I have other Bibles where there's the whole book is on one flip, one spread. So um, that's not that that's not that odd. Um, you know, others might really dig this. You know, the way that you mark up your Bible, you might really, really dig this edition. And if that's the case, I mean, make sure to go out and buy it. There's going to be a link to it down in the description below. Um, it's a super cool Bible. It's just not a hundred percent of what I wanted. Um, it's probably like seventy-five percent of what I wanted out of this Bible. So it's the Panorama New Testament. It's a cool Bible, super cool idea. Um, I'm just not gonna make a big of a deal over it as uh, I used to. I'm no longer scared to write in this Bible.